So guys, this is an in-depth guide on fighter planes for Azure Lane. My goal is to take a total beginner and make them an expert within this video, so I'll be starting from the very basics. I've also made a similar guide for battleship guns, so go check that out after this if you haven't already. This video is going to be packed with information, so you might want to watch it more than once to make sure you soak everything in. I'll also leave timestamps for each section so that you can skip parts you already know about. I'm going to assume you know what I mean when I talk about armor types in this video, but if not, then check out the video on armor types linked in the description before watching this one. There is not going to be anything about best in slot equipment since it is not an important concept in Azure Lane. Okay, with that out of the way, let's begin. First of all, what exactly are fighter planes? Fighters, along with dive bombers and torpedo bombers, are the primary equipment type for carriers and light carriers but in one or two cases, they can be equipped on aviation battleships. Planes are deployed when a carrier activates their airstrike, but fighters and a couple of other planes from other categories may automatically intercept enemy planes even when their airstrike is on cooldown. Here is a level 1 Kaga with three random planes. Here she is performing an airstrike. As you can see, one of each plane is sent out. Now, here is a max limit broken Kaga with the same skins equipped. She sends out a total of 8 planes instead of just 3 when her airstrike activates. Where is this difference coming from? The answer is from her limit breaks. You can find this information on her limit break screen as well as her wiki page. Carriers will gain extra planes from their limit break bonuses. Most of the time, they will gain 3 planes for the final limit break so it is very important to max limit break whatever carrier you're using. Notice that Kaga has 3 fighters, 2 dive bombers, and 3 torpedo bombers for a total of 8 planes. Currently, all carriers deploy 8 total planes per airstrike, except for the ultra rares, which deploy 9. Light carriers range anywhere from 5 to 8. Among carriers that deploy the same number of planes though, there is also variability in the combination of planes they can equip. Some carriers may carry 6 fighters and 2 torpedo bombers with no dive bombers, while other may carry 4 dive bombers and 4 torpedo bombers with no fighters. These differences in loadout will impact their use cases as well, since different types of planes excel at different things. Planes also play a huge role in the cooldown of airstrikes, although the cooldown value on the plane itself is far from what the actual cooldown of the airstrike is. The exact formula for airstrike cooldown can be found on the damage calculations page on the wiki. Basically, the term here on the left takes the cooldown of each slot and averages them weighted by the number of planes in that slot. That weighted average is then multiplied by 2.2 times this square root term, which is at 100 reload equal to 1. All carriers are going to have more reload stat than 100. So this entire part is generally going to be a bit less than 2.2. 0.33 is the absolute cooldown of airstrikes, which is just a constant you need to add to each airstrike but doesn't show up in game. Let's do an example with Kaga's loadout. The flapjack has a base cooldown of 11 seconds, and Kaga has 3 fighters, so we take 11 and multiply it by 3. Then, the Suisei Kai has a base cooldown of 9.98 seconds, and Kaga has 2 dive bombers, so we take 11.88 multiplied by 2. Finally, the Saiyun has a cooldown of 10.6 seconds, and Kaga has 3 of them, so we take 10.6 multiplied by 3. She has a total of 8 planes, so we take that total sum and divide it by 8. The results we get rounds up to 19.70 seconds, which we can confirm with the equipment page in-game. This cooldown value takes into account all equipped planes and reload stat, but not reload buffs that certain ships like Independence may have, or skills from equipment like the Homing Beacon. If you're curious about how the damage of planes are calculated, it is very similar to battleship guns in how base damage, slot efficiency, aviation stat, and damage buffs are calculated. Please watch the segment in the Battleship's Gun video if you're interested, as I don't want to rehash everything in this video. However, there are a few key differences. Firstly, for whatever reason, bomb scale with 80% of the ship's aviation rather than 100%. For example, if a ship has 500 total aviation, 
Then you must only use 500 times 0 0.8, which is 400, when calculating the stat scaling of the damage stat plus 100 divided by 100. Next, the final damage of aviation damage is heavily reduced by the anti-air stat. Here is the formula of how the anti-air stat is converted to aviation damage reduction. Let's take a ship that has 300 anti-air. 150 over 150 plus 300 is 1 over 3, or about 33%. This means that even at 300 AA, aviation damage is reduced by about 67%. The concealment mechanic ignores 10% of this reduction, means that if a carrier is concealed, instead of having their damage reduced by 67%, it is instead reduced by 57%. This means that their damage dealt goes from 33% to 43%, which is an increase of 30% and not just 10%. Some enemies will have upwards of 80% aviation damage reduction from anti-air. This means that concealment would bring carrier's damage from 20% up to 30%, an increase of 50%. Hopefully, this does the job of illustrating how important it is to keep your carriers concealed as much as possible. Okay, with that out of the way, let's now look at actual planes, starting with fighters. The primary role of fighter planes is interception. Almost all fighters will automatically intercept enemy planes, even when a carrier's airstrike is on cooldown. While anti-air guns scale off the anti-air stat of the ship that is equipping it, fighter anti-air guns scale off the carrier's aviation. The anti-air stat of a carrier with no anti-air gun only serves to reduce the aviation damage which they receive. However, you do not win battles just by shooting down enemy planes, but by wiping out all enemy surface ships, so the damage they deal is just as important. Conventional fighters are fighters that have automatic interception, and most of them will also drop bombs, but only when sent out from airstrikes, not when intercepting. There are also rocket fighters, which are very different from conventional fighters, and I will talk about them after. Both conventional fighters and dive bombers drop bombs. Similar to battleship shells, they have spread and splash values. The larger the bomb, the larger both its splash and spread tend to be. Spread refers to the area around the target that a bomb can be dropped into, and the splash refers to its AoE. On this wiki page, Ricist calculates the hit rates of bombs based on their spread and splash. For some reason, the spread is centered 5 units left of the center of the target's hitbox. I do not have the knowledge to verify the accuracy of the hit rates, but I have empirically tested some of the planes, including 1000 pound fighters and 10 Rai, to have hit rates within 1-2% of these values, so I believe they are accurate. Therefore, without having to dive very deep into how spread and splash work, you can just refer to these tables to see the expected hit rates of all bomb planes against stationary targets. For example, a 1000 pound bomb with 40 spread and 22 splash has a hit rate of 48.51% against a large stationary enemy. Looking at the flapjack, which have two of these bombs, each dealing 416 damage at plus 10, for a total of 832 damage, if we multiply its damage by its expected hit rate of 48.51%, we get 403.6 damage. Due to this large variance in hit rate, it is important to apply these hit rates to bombs if you want to compare them against other equipment types, such as torpedo bombers. But once again, do keep in mind that bombs scale to 80% of the aviation stat instead of the 100% that other types of ordnance scale to. Okay, with that being said, we are now ready to go into the best fighters. For conventional fighters, the strongest payload is 2 times 1,000 pound bombs, and then 2 times 500 pound bombs. Among the 1,000 pound bomb fighters, there are three options, but Flapjack is by far the best one. Starting with surface damage, all three fighters have the same bombs with the same stats, so the damage is identical. Their anti air guns are also the same, so it may seem like their interception should be the same, but it cannot be further from the truth. First of all, while the Pancake has the longest base cooldown of all three, it has a much lower interception cooldown. Additionally, it has much lower flight speed than the other two. The slower the plane flies, the longer it stays on the screen firing its AA guns, making its AA capabilities relatively better. 
In this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the difference in duration between the on-screen time of the flapjack and the Sea Hornet. Now, while the flapjack has the longest base reload, which may seem to be a negative thing, keep in mind that airstrike cooldown is affected by all plane slots and not just this one. So while it looks like there's a gap of 0.4 seconds, the actual gap on airstrike cooldown is even closer. Going back to Kaga as an example, her airstrike has a 19.7 second cooldown with the flapjack. And when you switch it out for the Sea Hornet, it becomes 19.43. Therefore, there is only a difference in damage if that 0.27 second difference in cooldown results in an extra airstrike, as the planes are not dealing any surface damage at all outside of airstrikes. In other words, in 99.99% of cases, there is no difference in surface damage between these three planes. Apart from being significantly better in its interception capability, the pancake is also much cheaper to craft from the gear lab compared to its competitors. It can be upgraded from a purple Corsair, which is obtainable very early on in campaign, as well as Eagle Union equipment boxes, and only costs 6 gold ordinance, 2 plain blueprints, and 20 electronics. In comparison, the Tiger Cat is upgraded from a slightly harder to obtain gold F6F Hellcat, and costs 7 more plain blueprints and 1 more electronic. The Sea Hornet is even worse, costing 12 plain blueprints and 42 electronics to upgrade from a purple plane. Therefore, with by far the best interception and low cost, the Flapjack is the only conventional fighter worth using if you have access to it. Before you get access to it though, you may have a Sea Hornet lying around from the Perseus event, which gave it out for free, and you can use it as a placeholder. If not, then you should use 500 pound bomb fighters in the time being, instead of crafting Tiger Cats. The biggest factor when it comes to 500 pound bomb fighters is going to be availability, as they are very similar to each other. Between all the options here, the purple F4U Corsair and the gold F6F Hellcat are going to be the best options. The F6F Hellcat has relatively low flight speed and strong AA guns, making it the best interceptor of its category. It can be easily obtained from gold or rainbow Eagle Union tech boxes, and will work perfectly fine up until chapter 15. The F4U Corsair can be farmed as early as chapter 3-4, and also drops from Eagle Union tech boxes. As shown previously, it also upgrades into the Flapjack, so even if you upgrade them to plus 10, you will eventually get your plates back when you upgrade them to Flapjack via the Gear Lab. The Sea Fang is also available from Royal Navy equipment boxes, but its anti-air guns are slightly worse than that of the Hellcat, and its higher flight speed makes it even worse for interception. If you get some though, they can be used as intermediary equipment because the difference between them and the Hellcat is not large. There is also the VF-17 fighter, which carries slightly stronger bombs than the other 500 pound bomb fighters. The VF-17 also comes with a skill, which increases the AA of your entire fleet by 5% when the airstrike goes off, making it really the best option to run at least one of among the 500 pound bomb fighters. However, it costs 800 core data and is not better than the flapjack, so I can't recommend it these days as there are much better things to spend your core data on. Once upon a time, these were the best fighters, so I have 10 of them lying around from those days, but I pretty much never use them these days. If you happen to have one, feel free to use it until you can equip every single fighter slot with Flapjack. Beyond the 500 pound bomb fighters, the rest of the conventional fighters are too weak damage-wise to be worth considering in almost all cases. I will get to those niche cases later. Since conventional fighters come with the best anti-air, their surface damage is lowest among all the plane types as compensation. However, this is not the case for rocket fighters, which unlike their conventional counterparts, do not intercept enemy planes. Before the release of rocket fighters, fighters were widely regarded as the weakest plane type since there was no fighter that dealt the most damage in any situation, but that changed with the release of rocket fighters. They deal much higher and more consistent damage than bomb fighters against the armor type that they excel at, which is light armor for the H4 rockets, and medium armor for the BF-109G. The BF-109G is a very important plane as it is permanently accessible through PR4 research and deals the highest damage against medium armor enemies. It is absolutely essential for ships like Implacable, 
Hakuryu, Enterprise, and Yorktown 2 when facing medium armor enemies. Its damage against light armor, although not as high as the HVAR, is still better than most other planes. It is also better against light armor than the HVAR is against medium. So if you just want one fighter to deal with both light and medium armor, then the BF-109G is the way to go. The HVAR plane is also event limited, so if you currently do not have any, there is no way to obtain it anyway. However, once you reach late game and still have gold plane plates left over, it is a worthwhile investment to squeeze out a bit more damage out of your carriers against light armor. Also, if you plan on using Kearsarge or Yorktown 2, both of whom often require a USS fighter for their skills, it would be a good idea to upgrade one or two HVARs even over the BF-109G. The FW-190 is also permanently available via the Gear Lab, but it does not excel against any armor type. Instead, it is not total deadweight against heavy armor unlike the other two rocket fighters, which is its only claim to fame. As it is a rocket plane, it is going to be much more consistent against single target heavy armor enemies compared to bomb fighters. However, it does not deal much more damage than a 100 pound bomb fighter on average. Additionally, you can get lucky and hit both the bombs of a 1000 pound bomb fighter, in which case the bomb fighters will peak higher in damage than this FW190. In my opinion, it's not worth using this outside of specific timing purposes. On the other end of the spectrum from rocket planes, there are fighters that do not drop anything and exist only for interception. They are pretty much useless for a majority of the game, since anti-air from fighters is never worth sacrificing all damage for. However, in Chapter 15, there is a new mechanic where you're allowed a support fleet that sends out fighters for the purpose of interception only, so interception is the only metric which matters. On the wiki table, we can sort fighters based on their AA damage, but this table does not take into account things such as AA gun range, flight speed, or aviation stat, which also increase interception damage. Using the flapjack as a benchmark, not many planes can beat it both in terms of DPS and burst. The purple FW190 and the ME155A stand out as planes that can beat the flapjack in both metrics, but neither of them are as slow as the flapjack, and their interception cooldowns are also longer. In the end, there is no real point in spending the resources to craft these planes which provide zero benefit outside of the support fleet in chapter 15, and even then, the impact is likely not measurable. Before I end the video, I will talk briefly about timing. In fights such as the meta showdown, you're given 80 seconds, or 77 seconds if you start counting when you load into the fight. With that taken into account, there's a good chance that using conventionally good planes, your carriers could be just 1 or 2 seconds short of getting off a 4th airstrike. In that case, it is worth switching out your flapjack, for example, for another plane that is much weaker on paper, such as the F-8F Bearcat, if you end up being able to squeeze in that extra airstrike. By switching from the flapjack's 2 1000 pound bombs to the Bearcat's 1, you're losing half the damage of the fighter slot, but remember that you have two other plane slots, as well as barrages, which are dealing damage as well, so the overall loss is probably 10% or less. However, by gaining an entire airstrike, going from 3 to 4, there is a 33% gain in damage, which more than makes up for the loss in using the weaker fighter. That is just one example of why you would use a weaker, faster fighter in a specific situation, so depending on the exact timing you need, you may run into a situation where you might want to consider one of these crappy planes just for their exact cooldown. I will dive into more detail on that specific topic in another video. But for now, just keep that in mind and keep at least one copy of all gold or buff fighters that are not easily reobtainable. Planes like the A6M50 and the ME155A that can be easily obtained from equipment boxes are pretty safe to scrap though. Okay, to summarize, the best conventional fighter in the game is the Flapjack due to its low interception cooldown and low flight speed, making it both the best fighter for interception as well as one of the best for surface damage. If interception is of no concern and you're against a single target light or medium armor boss, use the HVAR rocket plane or the BF-109G respectively as they deal the most amount of damage to those armor types. The BF-109G is better if you can only afford one plane for both light and medium armor types, and it is also more accessible due to the HVAR being event limited. 
If you do not have the three aforementioned planes, you can use any other fighter with two 1,000 pound bombs or any two times 500 pound bomb fighter as a placeholder. Ideally, the F6F Hellcat, which is easily accessible and will easily pull its weight up until chapter 15. VF17 is technically a slight upgrade over the F6F, but not worth the core data, as it will eventually be replaced by Flapjack, but do use it if you have them lying around. In terms of purple options for early game, the F4U Corsair carries two 500 pound bombs and can be farmed very early on. It also builds into the Flapjack via the Gear Lab, making it the best choice both in terms of usage and long term value. Aside from that, the rest of the fighters, especially ones that do not carry bombs or rockets, are essentially useless outside of situations where you want to use them for their exact cooldown. One last thing about this crash damage number. It is the base damage that the plane does when it crashes into the opponent's main fleet in PvP, which I mostly ignore, so as far as I'm concerned, it's irrelevant. That should be it for fighters. I originally planned to include all the plane types in a single video, but it would end up being too long, so I decided to split it up to make it more digestible. The next guide will be on dive bombers. Although there isn't as much variety as fighters, so I might put torpedo bombers into the same video as well. In any case, I hope you were able to learn something. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.